In recent times, the proliferation of arms in the sub-region has posed a major threat to peace and security. It fuels unrest in some countries and aids the activities of restive groups in several regions. As a result of this, the federal government of Nigeria urged for regional efforts to check the proliferation of small arms and improvised explosive devices, that is, IED threats, which together present a pressing security challenge facing the ECOWAS region. But joining us in the studio to talk about this is security expert Valentin Umoru. Good morning, Valentin. Good morning. It's good, good morning. to have you join us. Yeah, good. Uh, but the news this morning about uh, the building collapse. The building collapse is 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 hard. Uh, Distressing, really. Uh, Especially uh, with an 80-year-old losing five, five, five generations children. destroyed. Fortunately, I don't know when we will get, be able to get over this uh, building collapse problem. Well, we are hoping that uh, the government of the state take necessary step, just like Lagos State is doing. But uh, let's look at uh, the issue we are, we are you know, talking about this morning, talking about the matter of proliferation of small, small arms, arms and light, and light weapons. weapons. And uh, ECHO was looking at uh, a regional, perhaps, solution. Nigeria pushing for that. But let's perhaps backtrack a bit and have a historical perspective to this conversation for people to better understand how... Um, how challenging the situation is for us as a country. Um, you have been in, you know, you have worked with the government at some point to addressing this matter. But talk to us, how did we get here? How did we get here? How did we really get at this point? Mm. Um, terrorism today is a global phenomenon uh, which started not in Africa. What we used to know in Africa um, was a communal conflict in, mm. you know, all, up until such a time when uh, the global effect of, uh, of terrorism started gradually uh, finding their ways into the country. At the point in time, Nigeria used to be a country where you could vouch for the people, as people who love enjoyment. Mm. People who don't want to die. But the situation has long changed. Today, uh, blood, bloodletting is no longer news. It's seen as a common phenomenon. You know, we are used to it. People, people at a point in time when we got the prediction from an institution in America where we had some of um, these um, ailments that were killing uh, people. And some said, well, because of the, the nature of the population in Nigeria, that when it gets to Nigeria, we'll be picking corpses. That's COVID-19? COVID. On the street. You know, even before COVID-19, we also had the Ebola, the Ebola issue. Yeah. You know, and then people, Nigerians were worried, you know, but we survived that and then got to terrorism. The Yusuf Wa story, how it all started, how eventually he was arrested by the military, handed over to security agencies, the police, to be precise, only for us to wake up another morning and his corpse was paraded, you know, having been killed and battered, and then um, somebody took over and moved to the forest. Mm. That was the beginning of the sad news that we have continued to face up until this day. It was Boko Haram uh, that was eventually, well, the name given to it, not by the founders themselves, but by perhaps the West. Okay? And... Uh, the West gave them the name? Boko Haram is... What is Boko Haram? Mm -hmm. Yusuf, Yusuf, who founded Boko, what is now today referred to as Boko Haram, is Yusuf Wa. Mm. So where did the name Boko Haram came from? People started arrogating to them that, oh, these people don't want yeah, against Western, Western education. education and all of that. And you say Boko Haram. And then uh, uh, Shekau took over. Shekau, Shekau's history. Shekau is now history. <coughs> and then we now had uh, Iswa joining. And then... Winter groups. 
Sambisa became a, a, a hub of uh, uh, terrorists. Thereafter, we snowballed into what we now loosely refer to as bandits. Mm. You know, not really having in mind the meaning of bandit, uh, banditry. It's, it's, not, it's not limited to a sect. You know, if you look at the true definition of all of these come, and then we use them to identify some of these persons as we moved on. Mm. But as painful as, as it has become, today, beyond that conflict, we also had the header farmer co conflict. Mm. You know, aside from the inter and intra communal conflicts, these are the various conflicts that involve the use of small arms and light weapons. Without the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, some of these conflicts wouldn't have been so severe mm. the way they have become. Mm. You know, but the challenge is how do these people access the these weapons. small arms and light weapons and the IEDs? Of course, you know the IEDs played a major role when, the, when the Nigerian military was trying to immediately arrest the Boko Haram situation mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of IEDs were planted on the way, mm. you know, mines were planted, you know, along, not, not no, my, uh, the IEDs were uh, basically used by, by the suicide uh, um, bombers, bombers. Mm. you know, why the mines were used on the way to reaching the Boko Haram. When our military were trying to reach out to them, mm. these mines, they fell into the, all of these traps and it became a problem. We had little children, mm. you know, that were used with the IED vest to bomb uh, places. You know, some children. Women. Yes, women and, and children, yeah, yeah. and then that led to the 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 um, the kidnap of the Chibo girls. Yes, and then a lot of fear. Mm. Before then, we had series of this vest put on by children, women. You, you, whom you will not ordinarily suspect. Yes. And then they bombed places, churches and mosques, mm. market places, and then any gathering, anywhere people, they find gatherings, they just lead some of them there, detonate that IED, and then it becomes a problem. Mm. Well, at a, at a point, there was this um, government was trying to get other neighboring countries to help in the fight against um, illicit arms and uh, proliferation of firearms and all of that. But how has this worked for us so far? How has it worked for us? Nigeria will always say he's the big brother or she's the big brother or he's the big brother. The essence has been that we need help and then let's work together and see how we, we prevent What has that brought <coughs> to the table? Has he given us the result we want? No, but you are taking it away now that we, the, the, the governments of Nigeria over time perhaps... Had not spoken. Perhaps, you, I'm using, use, you, I'm helping you to say perhaps. Mm -hmm. Had not plans and then they go hit a particular target and then they, they withdraw and they are like nomads. Mm. They don't stay in a particular uh, place. They are always moving. And so when we try to invade then, you know, that was when Nigerians were saying that the actions of the military were in most times reactionary. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, but today, the, the situation in Sambisa Forest is 97% not what it used to be. Where you, Veronica, will wake up, come here every day. The first thing you want to talk about in the papers is how many places have been bombed. Mm. How many persons were killed. The previous day mm. and then it was consistent mm. but because the military has had the proper training now and they now know how you know a lot of our men were even ambushed mm. a lot of our military men were ambushed and when they hit they go back they know our men will come after them mm -hmm. as much as the military men try to go after them they will be ambushed or sometimes they had moles within them who will give out information about the movement but the military has been able to sanitize all of that and then has been able also to have proper training to manage the situation. That's why we are having what we have today. But how much contributions have we had from the neighboring other countries. neighboring countries? Okay. Nigeria, uh, uh, as I have often said, shares borders with Chad and Niger, Republic of Benin, and, the, and Cameroon. Okay, so but th these countries, in, in, in Republic of Benin, 
How much of terrorism do you find there? Mm. Chad, Cameroon, Niger, mm. how much of all of this do you have that? Yeah, if, if, you look at, if you look at ECOWAS, for instance, I've traveled by road to some of these African countries deliberately to see what happens along the line and along the roads and in those, in those countries. You find that, that what we are suffering in Nigeria, basically, they don't have most of it in those countries. Mm. Aside from intercommunal conflicts and, and tribal, and not tribal now, intercommunal conflicts you find in those countries. But Nigeria is crying out now. Mm. Okay? The, the, the Director General of the uh, Center for the Control of uh, uh, Small Arms and uh, Light That's Weapons working. was the one who raised this, this whole dust uh, during uh, the coordination uh, meeting for the um, commissions for small arms and light weapons from ECOWAS countries. Now, how much are they going to do in their own countries beyond are they going to be sharing information with us? The mm -hmm. IG said information sharing is the most important, which is, of course, very, very key mm -hmm. to whatever we want to achieve in all of this. As the police, the border, the, the, the movement of illicit uh, small arms and light weapons across borders, how much of that have we been able to check? Mm -hmm. The former president of Nigeria, uh, a military man, a security man, if you, if you ask me, retired though, Buhari at a point in time said the, the porous borders around the, the northern belt give, gave him cause for worry mm. as per the movement of illicit small arms into, into the country. What about the ECOWAS, uh, uh, ECOWAS uh, one of the ECOWAS conventions that uh, allows for free, free movement, movement amongst uh, ECOWAS uh, countries? countries yeah. So how has that helped us? And then over time, we've been able to trace some of how these uh, weapons are moved across borders, yes. particularly from uh, countries where you had conflicts, intercommunal conflicts, like when the, the dump of uh, Libya fell. All of that moved. Mm -hmm. Libya had a lot of equipment in, his, in a dump in the era of Gaddafi. Yes. And then after the fall of Gaddafi, what happened to those dumps? Mm -hmm. A lot of they those, a lot, yes, a lot of those equipment moved down all from from the North Africa. Many of them found their ways into Nigeria, particularly through the northern okay. part of the country where we have a lot of uh, porous borders. borders. Are you saying that those countries where, like Niger and uh, uh, Niger and uh, Chad, for instance, are you saying they do not have men that are supposed to ordinarily be policing our borders? Where on this their is, own end. Yes, on their own end. Of course, you, you cannot. This, this thing partic particularly didn't fly into Nigeria. Absolutely. Well, Many of them moved by, uh, through the land uh, borders. Mm. Perhaps, so, they have, perhaps they have illegal borders like we all do in, within Nigeria. Yes, before you got to the illegal borders where, between them and Nigeria, how did they come in? Mm. Okay, so my, my own question is about ECOWAS now. They've, there's been... Um, this issue of this talk about firearms and illicit weapons coming into different countries. And so there's been a question about the implementation of the um, firearms control protocol, which was enacted in 2019. Mm -hmm. How has that worked for everyone in the region? What is ECOWAS doing about all of these things? I wish the, the, I wish the ECOWAS uh, spokesperson were here. <laughs> You know, it would have been able to tell us because it, it's something that give, gives all of us uh, concern. concern yeah. You know, the Article 24 of mm -hmm. of Echo of uh, ECOWAS mm -hmm. and the UN um, uh, 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 Action uh, uh, Program for the Control of Small Arms and Light mm -hmm. Weapons. All of these are issues that gives Nigeria concern. For instance. Okay, the business, the, the, the illicit movement of small arms and light weapons from other countries is not even the biggest issue we have. The, the, the DG also talked about uh, the, the regulation and control of the, the ones manufactured by the uh, blacksmiths, the local blacksmiths In and country. all of them. The, uh, yes, within Nigeria. Mm. For instance, how have we been able to checkmate all of that? That easily gets into the hands of criminal elements, the non-state actors in Nigeria, as easy as possible. 
And I have often said here that the level of sophistication that these local manufacturers have gotten is, is, is cause for worry, gives cause for worry. It has become so alarming that sometimes you find it difficult to differentiate between a locally manufactured weapon from uh, one that is manufactured uh, from some of these factories in Europe, Asia, or America. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw what the, the DG of the center said about that, it, it gave me some measure of joy. But what have we been able to do with all of those that, were, that have been arrested over time with some of this equipment that were manufactured? Mm -hmm. You remember sometime in, in as, 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 as Saba when a local um, uh, a factory was busted in, the, in, the, in, in uh, somewhere of, not Asaba now, one of Edusca. the suburbs. I think it's Edusca. No, it was in Delta State. Okay. The, the military were able to bust that, they, they recovered generators. Some of the, when a family, yeah. a man... This, that was recently. Recently, yes, yes. it was recently. Mm. Now, we saw that the magazine that was supposed to carry a particular amount of ammunition, ordinarily fabricated by the factories abroad, that place, they were able to fabricate a magazine that took twice that number. Mm. Twice the number of what we are used to. So, which meant that if that magazine got to the hand of a non-state actor now, they're supposed to take on a state actor. And then you have the same number, the same kind of, this one is carrying magazine in its uh, uh, equipment you are carrying. This one would have exhausted his, why that one is just starting. Mm. Right. So, it gives cause for worries. Now, how do you want to regulate the activities of these persons? Mm. When you are make arrest of them, what do you want to do with, with them? them? This is within just local now. Now you find this same thing in some of these neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. These same local manufacturers in some of these neighboring countries who easily move some of these things. I was at Tinkan Island where seizures were made, seizures of drugs and all of that. And to my utmost dismay, some of these things left Canada hmm. and found their ways to Tinkan Island port, where the eagle eye of those in Tinkan, uh, talking about their energy, the, 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 the port uh, controller, and uh, his uh, a, a DC uh, enforcement, Gambo, were able to arrest these things. Now, the challenge was they left the ports of Canada. Mm. They were not concealed. When I say concealed, now I meant that it's not as if false compartments were created for them and they were hidden inside of them. These were things that were just merely loaded into containers, cannabis, in huge quantities. Mm. And then they got to Nigeria. Are you saying those cannabis that came uh, through the sea, passed through, uh, what did you call those borders again now? Porous borders. Porous borders yes. Sometimes you, we are. Sometimes some of us are, are forced to begin to imagine or think, you know, or, or allege that whether there is this collaboration mm. for us to destroy ourselves. Mm. You know, these people want to allow some of these things to go to, as sophisticated as the equipment, the technology you could find in places like Canada. Mm. Cannabis not concealed. That of India, India, India. Some drugs were were there that were seized also from India. That was, that is understood. I'm talking about a country like Canada, and so you also have local manufacturers of equipment in some of these neighboring countries. We call border towns, right? Okay. So, the, the, would you agree that we should um, people should be licensed to carry guns? Let's find a way to checkmate this. For instance, Ned Woku in January this year advocated for that. Um, uh, my brother, we are saying. <laughs> well, as a measure to check um, this prolific. We are saying action. right now, UN is worried, AU is worried, mm -hmm. EU is worried, all the countries and organizations across the world are worried. Mm -hmm. Do you know why we are worried? We are saying that there is too much illicit circulation of small arms and light weapons. Mm -hmm. And licensing will increase the number. That's what you're saying. No, saying. You're saying. 
And then you are talking about licensing. Even at a point in time, Nigeria withdrew the licenses they gave for to those of them who carried a double barrel for gaming. Mm. Why? We have too much illicit. Do you know that what the state actors bear today is just about 10% mm. of what is, in the, what is in the hands of the non-state so actors? How can we mop up this, this illicit firearms? Hey, hey, now you are talking. You are not, not licensed. No, not to, not, I, not because... the likes of Ned Umoko. Even those of them who said that, they are bearing arms illegally. Mm. Some of them, at a point, it, I think something came to the fore recently when they say uh, one, so whether somebody from the National Assembly or something was carry, bearing arms illegally. If you are found with firearms illegally, you will be arrested. So for anybody to tell you that at this point in time, in the history of Nigeria, suggesting that... So, so how have our laws even worked with yeah. the regards to the one of checkmating... Um, the legal Caribbean firearms and all of it. And uh, like he asked, what is the way forward with regards to this? ECOWAS, we're looking to collaborate with ECOWAS and the member states. Would we achieve the desired result at the end of the day from your perspective? Yes, we would achieve if we drive that, uh, you know, aggressively. If we have that aggressive drive and then checkmate our activities at the borders very well, uh, put the customs to work, help them, get the equipment for them, bring technology, modern technology. These are the same things we've been saying for many bring years. Bring modern, yes, but there, there no, you, you are not going to bring an angel from heaven to come and man your borders. Mm. It's the same we, the men, the security I am, I'm agencies. I'm saying that, that if we know we have a problem and we have been repeating the same um, solution, why are we not acting? Continue to beat it until you get solution. Mm. This is what we need, and that is why the, the DG has cried out now to say we need help from you neighboring countries, you know, and the IG has said one of the help we need is information. That information has helped the customs to some extent sometimes. They get information that so-so um, a catchment is leaving a particular country and then they'll be at a lot. And then when they get to our border, they begin to police and monitor and then they, they grab those, uh, those persons and then make seizures. We will continue to work. Our men are efficient, but whether they have the right technology to work is another uh, kettle of fish. But as much as you try to arrest or fight these cartels, they also pay so much to, to, to improve on the technology on, uh, 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 to beat your, your humans and then your own technology. For instance, the, if, the, if, if firearms are concealed in an equipment, how do they go about it? When they put pieces of uh, spare parts, metals, mm. and all of that in between and put them. Now, by the time the scanners are scanning those containers, they will get the same result. Now, the 100% in, would you tell them that for each container, drag each container down, bring everything down one after the other? Now, you need a more sophisticated technology. One, you also need people who will give you information, informats. Two, you, three, you also need moles that will be planted in the, in, amongst these other people that will give you information mm. that social things have been considered and you need to pay and, and, and you know, help to protect them as well. Mm. But the basic thing, the basic cry of the DG now is that African, you, you, those of you who are in our region, echo us. We need help from you. Up your antics, up your games. Do, do follow up, give us information, you know, concerning movement of all of this, particularly when they are not coming from, whether they are coming from your country or they are passing through, they are using your country as a passage. Illicit small harm arms in circulation now. A gun is manufactured to do what? To either kill or maim. Mm. And the moment you hand that gun over to somebody to use, the man will no longer even respect you. Someday he could turn that gun against you and bring you down. Mm. We have to all leave right. the conversation here now. We must thank you, Dalen Tinumuru, security expert, for your time on the program. Thank you. A pleasure.